I greet you in the love and the light of the infinite creator. Event is coming soon. YouTube channel. Here's the latest intel. Breaking news. Jesse Jackson was key FBI CIA operative in Martin Luther King's assassination. MLK assassination witnesses point to the assassin. All were pointing in the wrong direction. Who misdirected them? Olay Damigard's MLK assassination report, probable cause evidence shows that Jesse Jackson was the key covert FBI Cointo Pro operative responsible for April 4, 1968, Martin Luther King assassination. As first reported in New FO Digest by this writer, in the Judas Goat, published on June 21, 2016, the role played by Jesse Jackson in the slaying of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., brought to light through the work of Dr. William Pepper, Dr. Gary Null and other dedicated JFK MLK, RFK, assassination researchers is now public knowledge, as explained below by Alfred Lamberman Weber and Olay Damigard. Well-known JFK assassination researcher, Olay Damigard, says that probable cause evidence shows Jesse Jackson was the key covert police operative responsible for April 4, 1968 Martin Luther King assassination. In the aftermath of the assassination of Dr. King, Jesse Jackson continued as a post-King, U.S. black leader, including running as a 1984-88 Manchurian U.S. presidential candidate and from 1991 to 1997 for U.S. senator, based on his status as covert police asset at the Dr. King assassination. Vancouver, B.C., author and researcher Olay Damigard recipient of the 2016 Prague Peace Prize, has documented probable cause evidence showing that Jesse Jackson, a.k.a. Jesse Louis Burns, acted as a key police operative in the covert operation which resulted in the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in Memphis, Tennessee on April 4, 1968. Jesse Jackson appears to have been one of an integrated covert assassination team that also included U.S. Army sharpshooters, CIA, FBI, and Memphis police that assassinated Dr. King on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel. Jesse Jackson's principal role in the MLK assassination, orders from FBI to the Dixie Mafia chief resulted in Jesse Jackson going to the Lorraine Motel manager to change Dr. King to room 306 on Lorraine balcony. Olay Damigard demonstrates that Jesse Jackson acted as a messenger between the head of the Dixie Mafia the FBI CIA's contractor for the King assassination, and the Lorraine Motel management in changing Dr. King's ground floor room 206 to second floor balcony room number 306 so that U.S. Army sharpshooters and other cabal shooters would have a clear shot to Dr. King. The order to change Dr. King's safe room for one with an exposed porch went to Jesse Jackson via a covert phone call from the Dixie Mafia chief's wife to a third party with instructions to change Dr. King's ground floor room to the more exposed room 306. It has come to light that in defiance of Dr. Martin Luther King's dress code for the Memphis protest activities as planned, Jesse Jackson publicly refused Dr. King's order to wear a necktie, which had been designated as a secret U.S. Army sharpshooter target code. On the day of the assassination, Jesse Jackson along with his co-conspirator police CIA operative Reverend Billy Kiles, were the only people in Dr. King's key inner circles not to wear ties, despite Dr. King's public reprimand and argument with Jackson minutes before he was shot that he should change into a tie, which Jackson vehemently refused. Editor's Note. Only now, 48 years later has the real reason for Jackson refusal to wear a tie and to comply with King's order become publicly known. The U.S. Army sharpshooters and shooters involved in the King assassination had been issued orders to only shoot people wearing ties, which included Dr. King, Rev. Andrew Young and possibly Rev. Ralph Abernathy, Dr. King's presumed successor. This refusal by Jesse Jackson to wear a tie immediately prior to the assassination shows probable cause implicating Jackson as part of the assassination team and adhering to its secret code of no ties for conspirators. According to Damigard, the shots that hit Dr. King were fired by Memphis police officer Frank Strausser, accompanied by spotter Earl Clark, another Memphis police officer, 
with U.S. Army sharpshooters or other backup shooters hidden in the cafeteria of Fire Station No. 2, a nearby water tower and another high building. Following the shooting at the Lorraine Motel, Dr. Kane was taken to St. Joseph's Hospital where, according to a lay dami guard, an assassination cabal connected physician by the name of Dr. Green Bland entered with two men in suits, ordered nurses stop working on that nigger and let him die. The physician then spat on the victim, took a pillow and placed it on Dr. King's face, smothering him to ensure that he was dead. The designated patsy of this false flag assassination plot, James Earl Ray, did not fire any shots and had been handled by a mysterious operative, codenamed Raul, for over a year on trips through Canada and Mexico before the King assassination. As Raul managed and manipulated James Earl Ray, the Cointo Pro assassinations of Dr. King and Robert F. Kennedy were being planned by a high-level cabal, most notably, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, and including the Bush faction of the CIA, the U.S. Army and other national security chiefs. According to Dan Mugard, personnel involved in CIA's Operation 40 who had successfully carried out the John F. Kennedy assassination in Dallas on November 22, 1963 were also recruited in the assassination teams for Dr. King and Robert F. Kennedy. According to Dan Mugard, Jesse Jackson, who has acted as a national black leader since the April 4, 1968 assassination, acted out a psyops immediately following Dr. King's assassination whereby Jackson, according to Andrew Young, dipped his hand in Dr. King's blood on the balcony floor and smeared it on his pullover, creating a false meme that Jackson had been the last to hold Dr. King in his arms, which was patently false, according to all eyewitnesses. Jackson also stayed behind at the Lorraine Motel after all members of Dr. King's entourage departed for St. Joseph's Hospital where the stricken Dr. King was taken, and became the default de facto spokesperson for the world and national media for the King organization, which in fact promoted Jesse Jackson to a new national and international prominence. In fact, it was no within the drive. King's inner circle that Dr. King had uncovered Jesse Jackson as a police spy and was preparing to out him. Within the Memphis Police FBI CIA assassination team, Jesse Jackson was reportedly pushing for a quick King assassination date saying King was on to him. In the ensuing years, as a covert police asset at the Dr. King assassination, Jesse Jackson became a ubiquitous default black leadership personality replacing the authentic African-American leader Dr. King, whom Jackson helped assassinate, would have been. Besides media and social organizations, Jackson was a candidate for the Democratic presidential nomination in 1984 and 1988 and served as a shadow U.S. Senator for the District of Columbia from 1991 to 1997, positions he reached as a result of his status as a covert police asset at the Dr. King assassination. On March 26, 2015, Jesse Jackson Jr. was released from the minimum security federal prison camp, Montgomery in Montgomery, Alabama, to serve the rest of his sentence, for corruption while serving in the U.S. Congress, at a halfway house, the Volunteers of America Chesapeake facility in Baltimore, Maryland. House Select Committee on Assassinations, HSCA, 1978 Representative Henry B. Gonzalez, DTX, Mrs. Martin Luther King Jr. and the Congressional Black Caucus together started the House Select Committee on Assassinations, 1978, to investigate the assassinations of John F. Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. This reporter, then a co-director of the Assassination Information Bureau, was a public interest watchdog to the HSCA. Many independent researchers have documented the extent to which the CIA and other federal agencies infiltrated the HSCA such that the truth of these four key political assassinations, which began with a coup d'état in America with the assassination on November 22, 1963 by CIA Operation 40 personnel at the orders of high-level co-conspirators including President Lyndon B. Johnson, George H. W. Bush, Richard M. Nixon, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, and numerous power groups, from which the United States has never recovered as a modern democracy.
Olay Damigard has been invited to present as a speaker to the JFK Assassination Conference in Dallas, Texas in November 2016. Thanks for visiting our YouTube channel. Please enter our subscriber appreciation $100 monthly giveaway. This is our way of saying thank you for supporting us. The link to our giveaway is below in the description. We're adding new videos daily. Be sure to check out our library for additional intel. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Also, visit our sister channel, FYI, for your information. Victory of the Light. Is coming soon. YouTube channel.